Welcome back to The Shepherd's Pie, a slice of hope to raise faithful kids. I'm Tony Kolank. I'm a professor at Ave Maria School of Law down in Naples. I'm also the father of five and a uh, columnist for a homeschooling magazine and the author of the teen fiction series, The Harwood Mysteries. Speaking of that series, by the way, I've been blessed to speak with several middle school classes uh, over this past month in Florida, New Jersey, even in Canada. Uh, and if uh, your middle school is ever looking for an author to come talk about storytelling or the writing process or even the Middle Ages, uh, go ahead over to my website, antonycolink.com, and put a request form in for me, and I'll be glad to set that up with you. But today we are speaking with a Canadian friend, Stephen McAvoy, who is a book reviewer and a blogger. And we're going to be speaking about the importance and the availability of book clubs for our teens. My guest today is Stephen McAvoy. He is a book reviewer, a blogger. He has hundreds of books that he reviews uh, on his blog, bookreviewsandmore.ca, uh, which is viewed by thousands of readers every week. He also is a regular guest on various podcasts, but his day job is actually an IT specialist. He does all this other stuff as a passionate hobby. He's a husband and a father of four, and he's been on The Shepherd's Pie several times uh, reviewing various things in the past, and it's just a wonderful opportunity to have him back again today. Stephen, welcome back to The Shepherd's Pie. Thank you. It's great to be back. So we're doing something a little different today. Usually when I talk to you, we are reviewing book after book, but you mentioned that you also are into book clubs, and I think that would be a great topic for us to hit today. But before we get to that, maybe tell our listeners a little bit more about uh, this passionate hobby of yours and how you got into doing all of this book reviewing. It started by accident. I have a dual form of dyslexia, and I came out of grade seven reading at a grade three level. And I went into grade eight reading at a university level. And my parents had sent me to a private summer school that was five days a week, eight hours a day for the whole summer break. I wasn't particularly fond of them at the time, but I do, looking back, appreciate it. And I went from reading at a grade three level to a university level and reading about 25 words a minute to reading over 400 words a minute over a summer break. And for me, it was this whole world that I never knew existed. Even for academically, for school, I would try and get the movie on VHS or beta and watch the movie to do my book reports for school because my reading was so poor at the time. So for me, books became really a bit of an addiction. I, I joke that I'm a bibliophile, or a, a book addict. And there were times in university where I bought books instead of buying food. Like new books would all come out on Tuesdays. and There would be a couple of new books I'd want. And I'd buy the new books and a bag of rice and eat rice until the next payday. So for me, it was like this whole world that I never knew existed. When I first started reading, it was mostly fiction. As I, I grew and matured, it started switching in a mix of fiction and nonfiction. But right now, I try to alternate a nonfiction with a fiction for every book I read, and I average about a book a day. Wow. Just out of curiosity, how do you get so much reading done so productively, especially when it's not even like this is your full-time job? Part of it is, is lifestyle choices. Other than hockey playoffs, I don't typically watch much TV. I usually have a fiction book on the go that I don't need to pay as close attention to, that I use um, adaptive technology and use text-to-speech and listen to it. If I'm mowing the lawn or shoveling the driveway or walking to the bus stop, I used to have about a 40-minute walk to the bus stop before my commute to work in the morning and then same on the way home. So I would listen to a book while walking to the bus and then I'd read it while I was on the bus and then I'd read it on my breaks at work. I also try to get off my devices about an hour before I go to bed and just read. It's about the only time I read physical books. Part of it is changing habits. Like several years ago, I removed all the games from my phone and my tablet. My reading doubled that year. The year after that, I started using the text-to-speech when I was walking. At that point in time, I was actually walking to work. My reading doubled again that year. Remarkable. And do you review all of those on your website too, or you just take a selection? I do now. For the last four or five years, I've reviewed every book I've read. All right. So book clubs. First of all, I guess probably most people might imagine they know what a book club is, but maybe tell us a little bit of uh, how you got into book clubs and what they really are if folks aren't part of one. There's kind of a couple of different types of book clubs, and, I, and I've been members of, of all of them. Um, I'm a member of the Goodreads Catholic Book Club, which is about 1,600 members right now. 
Anyone in the book club can nominate a book and then a discussion on the book as we read it over the period of a month. Uh, the moderators set up a series of kind of set questions to get conversation going. Some months, there are tons and tons of posts and responses. It depends on the books and who's interacting that month. Other book clubs I've done is I used to lead a men's book club group where there were seven men that would come to my house once a week. And we would watch a video and discuss a book. On that video, uh, we did uh, Wild at Heart by John Eldridge and a couple other books along those kind of lines for men growing as men. And it was in person. It was live. You had the book. You had your questions. There was a, a workbook as well. And then the other type of book club that I belong to is Father Mark Goring's St. Mark's School of Reading, where it's a subscription through Patreon. And he has a book of the month, depending on your subscription level, you get one, three or six books a year. He releases videos almost every Monday and he breaks down the book into a set series of teachings. And uh, there's a lot of interaction both on his Patreon page and on the YouTube pages for those videos. Patreon is a service to help the arts. So it's basically, if you go back to the middle, Middle Ages, Michelangelo had a Patreon who would commission him to do sculptures or paintings or artwork. It's a, a modern version of that patronage of the arts. Uh, you could be an author, a writer, a musician and have a, a Patreon page and you subscribe to support them. I, 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 there are several authors that have them. There's a couple that I support that I'm pretty passionate about their work. And it's a, it's a way to support them in doing the arts because a lot of people can't make their living this day in the arts, but it helps facilitate their doing the arts. And for Father Marks, it's specifically for the purpose of having this access to these private teaching videos, these learning videos in the book club. As an author for teens, I'm a believer that teens should be reading books. But um, what I thought would be interesting is maybe we start with Father Mark Goring's book club, because my understanding is that this is a club that actually, you know, is part of a youth group. So maybe this could uh, help us get the conversation started on why teens should be involved with a book club. So maybe tell us a little bit more about his book club and how that started and all that. His book club grew out of his youth group ministry. Father Mark Goring is a member of the uh, Companions of the Cross. If you're not familiar with them, the Companions of the Cross is an organization where parish priests live in community and then go out to their parish to work instead of all these single men alone in isolated parishes. So Mark started there when he was about 18, living with the Companions of the Cross and discerning vocation and studying. And books and formation have been a big part of his own life and his youth ministry. The youth ministry at, at St. Mary's in Ottawa has always been huge. It's a very vibrant youth group, and he, he works very close with these books. And a lot of the material he shares with the Patreon book club is stuff that he's developed in his youth group. So what do these kids get out of being part of a book club? I bet if you were to poll a bunch of teenagers about things they'd want to do, a lot of them would not put book club on the list. So why a book club for teens? Well, part of the way that Father Mark does it is that it's a component of their overall meeting. So they have a weekly meeting on a Friday night. All the youth come to the church or if they're off site, they have a worship time. They have some adoration time. They have some time with a, a teaching time with a specific book and handouts, um, sometimes handouts on sections of the book or questions like work to work on with the book. Um, and then they have their social time. So it's, it's built into a whole thing. So it's not just, oh, just come to this book club. The spiritual feeding that's part of that book club really helps solidify the group and causes the group to grow and be strong because it's not just a social event. There's more to it. So speaking more generally, what do you think are some of the benefits for teens being part of a book club? Obviously, they're reading a book, but it's not just that they're reading the book. They're doing it in a group setting. They get asked questions. Um, what are some of the advantages that you've seen? One of the big advantages is that if you just read a book and then put it down and, and don't interact with the material again, you lose most of it pretty quick. Almost anyone does. If you're part of a book club and you're thinking about the book club and you know, okay, we're discussing these chapters this week, you're reading with a little more intention and focus. Maybe you're making a few more notes. My daughter had a, a book report to do that she's working on right now for school. And it's a book that I read several years ago and I absolutely loved. Uh, so she asked me if I'd reread it with her when uh, she was doing it in grade 11. So last night we had a conversation. She's like, hey, and she asked me about eight or nine questions about the book, different themes, topics, things that she thought about. So when you're part of a book club, you're helping the material solidify. You're growing deeper. It's kind of like the, the parable of the, the rocky ground and the good soil. Uh, if you just read a book quickly and discard it and don't think about it anymore, it's fallen on the path. If you've thought about it a little bit and maybe written a quick summary for yourself or jotted some notes, highlighted some passages, 
you're on the shallow ground, but it's going to grow up, it'll wither. But if you're on the good soil, the material from that book is going to sink in and it's going to form you and shape you and help you to grow. Now, as the father of teenagers yourself, have you seen uh, your own kids uh, want to be part of these kinds of book clubs? My oldest absolutely loves books, but she's not a big reader. My second oldest absolutely does not like reading, but she does enjoy books when she gets to them. My youngest two still read to me every day. We have a family chore task up on the wall. And one of their tasks is to read at least five days a week for 20 minutes out loud to either my wife or me, but they get rewarded. So if every 13 days they read, they get a $10 gift card. We started it one summer when my kids were younger and the oldest two were both, one was about a half grade behind and one was about a quarter grade behind reading level at the end of the school year. And when we got the first assessment at the beginning of the next school year, they were both a half grade ahead of their expected reading level because they had read throughout the summer. That's excellent. And that's a pretty generous allowance they get for that. I suppose it's almost like you're doing your own family book club. Do you tend to ask them questions about what they've read to you to kind of something like you might find if you were in a book club? Absolutely. And and particularly with the the books from your own um, collective, the Catholic Teen Books authors, there's a lot of reading guides for almost all of those books, either available as separate books themselves or at the end of the books, like Karina Turner's and Teresa Linden's books, all have questions and answers at the end. Your own books are included in that. And those resources at the end of some of those books are great. Sometimes even I'm reading a book and I will go and I'll talk to my my kids or their friends that are here about the book saying, hey, I'm reading this book and it's about this. And um, what do you think of this? And a lot of times that causes discussion before they even get interested. And I read a book, not by a Catholic author, Gordon Corman recently called Masterminds. Um, and it's about a town where the the whole town is an experiment where they've genetically modified kids and they're monitoring them from birth up. And the kids that are part of the program discover it and they escape from the town. That's the first book. So I, I read it and I was like, it blew my mind thinking about it. Like this whole town that's this one experiment. So I mentioned it to my kids and I talked to them about it. And uh, like both my, my 15 year old and my 11 and 12 year old, like they love the idea of it. And they started talking to their friends about it. And my 11 year old and a couple of her friends have read it. My 15 year old read it now. So those discussions definitely take place within the family. Yeah, no, that's that sounds great. And yeah, I'm glad you uh, mentioned, I'll go ahead and emphasize the catholicteenbooks.com is what you were just talking about. There's about 15 or 16 of us authors there with books for teens. And you're right, uh, most of us have discussion guides and questions built into the books because we know we, you know, we want the books to be used by families and by youth groups and classes and of course, book clubs. So you mentioned earlier Goodreads. A lot of people might be familiar with Goodreads in general, but you actually were talking about a Catholic book club. So maybe tell us a little bit about that. I actually uh, have several friends that I only know online from Goodreads who encountered my reviews on Goodreads. I post them on my blog and I cross post them on Goodreads. And I joined this Catholic book club and it's been fantastic. One of the things that's great about it is it it goes from like mid-teens all the way to late 80s and 90s that are people that are members on there. There's authors that are members. One of the facilitators is an author from Spain who writes Catholic young adult novels in Spanish and then does his own translation work into English. So the way it works in that book club is anyone can join, anyone can propose a book, and then there's voting. When the voting takes place, uh, there's a certain subset of books that's in the list for voting. And there's a longer list of other books that are waiting to be voted upon. If books get zero votes for a couple of months, they get taken off the list and get dropped back on the bottom of the wait list. um, And new ones get put in. If there's a tie, then they take the next two months. Last month, we actually did Karina Turner's, Kathy Teen Book Authors, Friends in High Places. So there's three official novels and one novella short story set in that universe. So we did the three novels over the month as a group. What is that book club like? Is it also similar with kind of discussion questions uh, or is there ever any live interaction where people are seeing each other face to face or audio? I have not been part of any live interactions face to face. They have had a couple over the few years I've been a member have it fit my schedule. The way it's set up is each month they create a new subsection on the group on Goodreads for that specific book. And then they have a series of questions based on the book, like the introduction along the way, things that really hit you. If the author is a Goodreads author, they'll invite them to participate. And you cannot ask the author questions directly regarding the book or responses to other people's questions about the book. 
And then just as the month goes on, people read the book at their own pace and comment. Sometimes people find older books that have been a book club book months ago, years ago, and we'll add some comments to those chats. The chat will pick up and carry on again, but each month has a focus on one particular book and a series of questions, and then the interactions are all written. You know, just as somebody who's been participating in these clubs yourself, what do you find you you get out of them? And you read so many books. Um, is, is answering these questions or sort of discussing the questions really bring you a lot of value added? It depends on the month. There's some months that I'm very, very involved in the discussions. And there's other months that because of work and family, it doesn't work out for me to read the book. And occasionally there's a book that I'm not interested in. I just skip those conversations. But the ones that I've participated in have all been very meaningful. Um, I've also read some books that I probably would not have read if they weren't part of the book club. For example, uh, next month we're doing Mexican Martyrdom about the history of the martyrs of the Crucial Wars. There's a book that's been on my list to read at some point in time, but I just keep not getting around to it. But now that it's going to be the book club book next month, it's going to get read. And it's not just Goodreads and Father Mark Goring. I know that you also mentioned that Facebook has some different book clubs on there. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, there's two. One is a true book club. The other one is the Catholic Teen Books Facebook page that's linked to the Catholic Teen Authors page. That one, sometimes there's some absolutely fantastic discussion. A lot of books get suggested. A lot of people come and ask for recommendation for books. The other, the Catholic Book Club is a group as well. It's moderated. It's more people suggesting books they've liked. There's less discussion on it. But the Catholic Teen Books one, like there's been some absolute great discussion over the, over the years. And I've read books... I probably would have never read uh, if it wasn't for the chats in the in the Catholic Teen books. For example, Cynthia Tooney's Birdface series. They're about a, a teenage girl, little slight romance, little mystery. Probably would have never picked them up except for some of the comments in the groups about how good they were. I love the books. I've I've given them to both my daughters. That's one of the things that I like about book clubs is they often stretch me outside my comfort zone for what I would read or want to read. Let's say you've got a parent uh, or a grandparent, a teen, youth group leader, and they're like, number one, you know, why should I suggest a book club to my kids or my youth group? And number two, how do I get them interested? Do you have any uh, advice for them? I think part of it is finding the right book. I truly believe that there aren't any non-readers. I think there are people that haven't encountered the right books yet. And I, I have lots of people that reach out to me for recommendations for books through work, for themselves, for their kids, for friends, for family, or they'll ask me for recommendations for confirmation gifts. And I always ask some questions about who the recipient is, and then try to gear books to the recipient. Part of it, too, is if you're a parent, I'm not hesitant about bribing my kids. Like when it started, when we started our family book club like six years ago now, when we started these reading plans where we read together, they got a $10 gift card for either Chapters or Amazon. Chapters is like a Canadian brick and mortar version of Barnes and Nobles. My oldest daughter, who's the most reluctant reader, after the whole summer, she had read like 56 days of the 60 days of summer break. But she's like, I read and read and read and all I get is more books. So that's when we said, well, you can read more days and you'll get a generic gift card and then you can decide where you want to spend the money. So Part of it is is finding a way to encourage and motivate them to read. Part of it is reading to them. Like when she was the most reluctant reader, she had to read to me for 20 minutes a day and she, she struggled. She didn't like reading. We would sit side by side and she'd read one page and I'd read the facing page. And she'd have to read for 30 minutes instead of 20 minutes because I was reading partially. Find ways to get them to do it no matter what it takes. In regards to teens and youth, make it part of something bigger. There are so many great Catholic books out there fiction, nonfiction, that you're going to find something that's going to interest lots of people. Move around different genres, fiction, nonfiction, but work on the lessons that you can pull from it and tie into the other work that you're doing with the teens and the youth as part of the youth group. Like, don't try and start a book club that's just, hey, we're going to come and get together one, an hour a week and just talk this one book. And we're doing that for forever going forward. That's not going to happen with this generation. But if you say, hey, 15 minutes of our hour meeting every week is going to be on a book, you have three chapters to do this week. You can get a lot easier buy-in on that, particularly once they, like, they will find that there are books they, they get interested in. They read quicker than they need to. And all this talk about encouraging our kids to read and improve their reading level is a great segue into our entertainment segment.
All right. In my entertainment segment, I like to ask my guests if they have a book or a movie that they might recommend, especially on the topic of the day. And uh, Stephen, I understand that you actually brought us a really appropriate one uh, for our conversation today. What is that? The book is called How to Get Better Grades and Have More Fun. It's written by Steve Douglas and Al Jensen. Uh, it was originally published by Campus Crusade for Christ as a support book for students in university. I've used it with my own daughter who's in high school. Um, and it is an incredible book. What it does is it takes the 80-20 principle, for those of you not familiar, 80% of your profit comes from 20% of your product, or 80% of your sales comes from 20% of your sales reps, which is pretty much a universal rule in business to academics. It teaches you how to do school better. The way it's written is you read one short chapter a week over a semester and you peak for exams. So when I was in university the first time, I had a high 50s, low 60s average, and I cared more about the social life than the academic. When I was back in school the second time at a different university, I used this book. In my first three or four semesters, I read this book every semester. At the back of the book is a chart of all the tips you learn, but it talks about being prepared for class. It talks about the purpose of the course. And the book is written as one of the authors had gone back to university and was doing um, an MBA. And he met a bunch of students in the student union and, and overheard their conversation and then kind of joined in, talked to them about how some of them were struggling academically. And he worked with both an engineering student and an art student throughout the semester, teaching them these lessons that he had had from business to academics. And that's how the book came about. In the book, one great example is what's the purpose of the course? Like find out what the purpose of the course is. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you're doing, I did an introduction to church history with Arnold Snyder at Conrad Grable College here at the University of Waterloo. First class, I said, what's your purpose for the course? And he said, I'm going to tell you, 50% of your final exam, 25% of your overall mark is one question. Your uncle Bob sitting at the Christmas table and says, I heard you took the history of Christianity. Tell me the story in your words. Well, normally for a church history course, I would have created all kinds of charts and memorized names and dates and places. Would have been wasted effort in this course. That's not what Arnie cared about. He wanted to know that you could tell the story of Christianity in your own words. So instead of spending all kinds of time on this stuff that didn't matter, I focused on the flow of the story and being able to tell the story in my own words. And I got a great mark in the course. Is this a book that you think a high school student could also use the same methods to uh, get better grades and have more fun? Absolutely. My oldest daughter that's at home always wanted to be a vet, but she struggled academically and she didn't like reading. So I gave this to her in grade eight and said, hey, this really helped me. Give it a try. She read a little bits and pieces through grade eight and again through grade nine and, and did OK, but she absolutely could have done better. In grade 10, she really buckled down. Yeah, I want to be a vet. But to be a vet, I need to pull up my grades. I need to get into all the academic courses at the higher levels. And she used the book through both semesters in grade 10, and her marks drastically improved. I didn't actually sit down with her. I didn't guide her. I just gave her the book and said, hey, it's worked for me. It took her a couple of years to take it serious, but she kept the book in her backpack for about three years. This last semester, it was out almost every night. So it works. So just, I mean, out of curiosity, what is it about this method that is, is so impactful with their grades? Well, part of it is it's all short, sweet lessons. Like every week, you only read nine to 13 pages in the book. So you're not adding a bunch to your academic load, but each lesson is very different. So one of the things that it said to do is always be on time for class. I got in the habit of being 15 minutes early for class and I would read last week's notes and then I'd read the week's before's notes and then I'd read the week's before's notes. And then if I got done, I'd go back and start last week's notes again. Well, when it came time for final exams, I didn't have to sit down and cram. I've read my notes 30, 40, 50 times over the semester. It took me 15 minutes a day before class. One of his sayings is BAM. So be, anticipate, and motivate. So you're prepared for class. You've done the readings. You've read over last week's notes so it's fresh in your head. The teacher starts talking about something. You can ask a question to tie things together, to predict where the teacher's going. And be interactive with your learning, not just sitting there crypting notes. And each one of these little lessons is one short point. And all these short points are on one page at the back of the book. And what I did when I went to university the second time is I actually photocopied that page. And I had it in the front of my binder for every single course. So every day I'd just quickly skim over the notes for the tips and then apply them at that class. 
I got to the point that I didn't study for final exams. Like I didn't set aside, like I, I didn't cram. I never studied the night before exam my last three or four years in university because I knew the material and I trusted that I knew the material. You know, Stephen, it's interesting because I've been teaching at college and law schools for almost 20 years. And a lot of the tips that you're saying are exactly the things I'm telling my students on the first day of class to try to help to get them to learn basically how to be a good student, really. So that's great. So it's called How to Get Better Grades and Have More Fun by Steve Douglas and Al Jansen. You can get it on Amazon or anywhere else. So what about, uh, as we wrap up here, what if folks want to learn more about you or totally get into your blog and your book reviews? Uh, where should they go? Well, they should go to bookreviewsmore.ca or they can look me up on Goodreads, Stephen R. McAvoy. All my reviews are cross-posted there on Goodreads. I will call out, not everything I read is, is Christian. Uh, I actually had an incident a couple of years ago where a mother from the Catholic Teen Books Facebook group had loved a bunch of my reviews, given her son a bunch of my books. She saw my blog that I had reviewed a Jack Reacher book, and she picked it up and gave it to her son without even reading the back of the book. Not appropriate for a 14-year-old. But I do tag all of my posts on my blog that are Catholic with a Catholicism tag and the year. And I also tag all the books from the Catholic teen book authors. So you can hit that in the sidebar and get the whole list of all the ones from them that I've read and reviewed. I would just want to end with one note. I want to tell parents and guardians, be a reader yourself. If the kids don't see you reading, you're not going to get them to buy into it. And it's something that my wife actually brought up with me because I read mostly on my phone because of my dyslexia. I can change the font and I can change the page color and the font color. But my wife was like, it just looks like you're on the phone. So I started deliberately reading physical books in the evening when my kids were younger. So they would see me reading a, a book. I was reading the book before, but they didn't see that. They just saw me on the phone. So part of it is if you want your kids to be a reader, be a reader yourself. Read with them. Read the same books they're reading. Like over this past year, I've read about a half dozen books that my daughter in grade 11 or my son in grade nine is reading. I've, I've reread the Shakespeare plays that they're doing. I read Oedipus Rex again last month because my daughter was doing it. Station 11. So re read the books that they're reading at school. Have discussions with them about what they have to read and then draw them into other stuff that you want them to read. Great advice. Thank you for adding that. Well, great. You know, Stephen, this has been great having you on. I, I'm glad that you uh, suggested this topic because I think there are a lot of families out there that could be checking out book clubs now for their kids as a way to encourage uh, even better reading and, uh, and absorption of what they read. So thank you again. I really appreciate having you on the show. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for the show today. We've been speaking with Stephen McAvoy about book clubs and the importance of encouraging reading in our youth. Again, this is Anthony Brone Colank. If you have a question for me or a topic you want me to cover, please drop me a line on my website at antonycolank.com. Also, you can learn more about my historical fiction series there, The Hardwood Mysteries. Until next time, may God bless you and your families as we work together to raise faithful kids. Mm -hmm.